Hey guys, what's going on? Thanks for tuning into my channel. When I started wing foiling, I had no idea what I was getting into. Uh, I just knew this sport looked awesome and I was gonna do whatever it took to get good at the sport. Now, I wanna share with you guys my progression from my first session to my eighth session and also give you some tips that I would have found super helpful if I had learned throughout my journey. This will hopefully help you guys get an understanding of what to expect when you start wing foiling and how long it's gonna take for you to get up and riding and get up and riding comfortably and doing all kinds of different maneuvers. So let's get into this video, but first, intro. Three, two, one. Hey guys, what's going on? Blaze here. Thanks for tuning into my channel. If you're new to the channel, make sure to check out my other wing foil tutorial videos. I'm gonna link some of the most popular ones in the description below. When you start wing foiling, a lot of people have different experience. Some people have wind surf, some people have kite surf, some people even have foil experience. I personally had a little bit of kite surf, a little bit of wind surf, um, but no foil experience. And man, was riding the foil way more challenging than I expected. Uh, definitely if you're bringing any skills to the table, I hope for your guys' sake, you have a little bit of uh, foil experience. Like I said, I had none. And that was the hardest thing to learn by far. Before my first session wing foiling, I actually went out with my board and my foil and got pulled behind a boat. Now, I highly recommend this if you do have access to a boat because I was blown away with how challenging it is to ride a foil. And doing it behind a boat, a lot less to worry about compared to flying your wing and, ride, and learning to ride your foil at the same time. So when I went behind the boat, well, let me tell you one thing, I was pretty bad and this was such a foreign feeling. I had never experienced anything like this before and I definitely struggled right out of the gate. It probably took me uh, two full sessions of you know a few hours each before I was finally comfortable riding the foil behind the boat. If you don't have access to a boat, don't worry too much. It's just gonna take you a little bit extra time to get up and going and get a feel for that foil. Uh, I'd estimate about four or five sessions more than if you had a couple behind the boat. So uh, just keep that in mind, manage those expectations, so don't just expect yourself to pop up and start ripping on that foil right away. One really important aspect when you're learning to wing foil is your gear. Uh, I do have a video that shares all the gear that you need based on your body type and body size. Uh, I'm gonna link that in the video description below, so make sure to check that out because your gear is very important and some gear is gonna help you learn and progress a lot quicker than other gear. So again, make sure to check that video out, which I'll link below. My first two days going out wing foiling were lighter wind days. I think the wind was blowing just over 10 knots, uh, which is very light, especially when you're a beginner, to get up and get going when you're wing foiling. I definitely don't recommend going out in anything under 15 knots for your first few sessions. It just makes it so much more challenging and you don't have the skills and technique to get up in light wind conditions. It wasn't a total loss for going out in those lighter wind conditions though, uh, because I was able to just play around with my wing. Uh, I stayed pretty much on my board the whole time, but got an understanding of how to fly my wing, um, which is an important part about wing foiling. My third session wing foiling, the wind was blowing at 50 knots and it was amazing. It was the first time I actually was getting up and ripping on the foil and the feeling was mind blowing. It, as soon as you get up and ride that foil, you're hooked for life. It is the most incredible feeling. The only way it can be described is by flying and you're just beyond stoked. So uh, yeah, I was so excited. Um, basically on that third session, uh, I was getting up, getting going, but I was also having some epic face plants. Um, it was really challenging uh, thinking about flying my foil at the same time as I was powering my wing. So I was just getting jolted by the wind or underpowered and falling back or just not, not having my weight distribution right and then tanking forward again. So some huge learning curves, but those moments in between uh, were just incredible. Like I said, the feeling of flying on your foil is mind blowing. So uh, I can't wait for anyone who hasn't experienced it to get up and flying and get hooked on the sport. During that third session, I could ride both regular and goofy, but uh, I'm a naturally regular stance and I definitely found goofy to be a bit more challenging and feel a little bit awkward. I later learned that I was doing a lot of things wrong and there were, were actually a bunch of tips that I wish I had known when I'd started out. Uh, one of them being just how to carry your setup properly. When I was doing long walks, getting going back up wind when I get blown down the beach, uh, I didn't even really know how to carry my setup properly because I didn't really think about it. Um, I've listed a bunch of these tips in my five tips for beginner wing foilers. I'm gonna link to that video in the description below. So if you are new, uh, make sure to check out that video. It's some things that really helped me once I learned them the hard way, uh, and hopefully they can help you guys out and uh, increase that learning curve. 
during my third session, I definitely was having trouble controlling my board. I feel like I, was, uh, I wasn't so much riding uh, my board as I was surviving on my board for the times that I was up on foil. Uh, so that just gives you a sense of how I felt during that third session. Had the ripping, had the epic feeling of flying on the foil, but definitely wasn't in control. And I feel like the board was riding me more than I was riding the board. During my fourth and fifth session, that's when I feel like it really started to click. I was way more comfortable on the board. Getting up on foil was a breeze, pun intended, uh, and just riding felt way more comfortable. Uh, one of the other things that I figured out or starting to figure out is I was still breaching and face planning because I think that still happened to me now. So you're never gonna fully cross that off. But I learned a trick where it, when I hit that maximum point, and that's when you typically would drop down and face plant, uh, I was able to, if you lean, continue to lean back and ride out more of a stall, it's gonna prevent that, um, that board from kind of boomeranging into a face plant. So I was kind of testing that out. Uh, it wasn't a perfect situation on that fourth or fifth session, but definitely had a little bit of success uh, floating down back onto the board versus just slamming down face first. Uh, so that was a definite plus. On that fifth session, I also started working on my knee starts. Uh, it's a much easier way to go from a down position to a standing position. Uh, I have a big enough board where I can just stand on my board and then pull my wing up and worry about generating forward momentum. Um, but when you get go down to a smaller board as you progress, a knee start's gonna be mandatory, so it's always good to practice that knee start. It's also just a more comfortable way from going from a down knee, a kneeling position to that standing position. So by my sixth and seventh session, I was ripping and way more comfortable. I could actually ride the board, feel that foil underneath me, adjust my stance to compensate for how much lift I wanted, uh, and really just, uh, I don't know, just feel more comfortable flowing across the water. The other thing that's a huge part of this, especially in lighter wind days, uh, are getting up on foil. I was definitely getting better at activating that front foil and using all the techniques that I had searched for on YouTube uh, and applying them to actually getting up on that foil. Um, again, I've got some great tips on how you can get up on foil. Uh, a video I'll link in the video description below. Uh, so make sure to check that out if you guys are having a tough time getting up on foil because I know that was a sticky point for me. But by that sixth and seventh session, it was no problem at all. Um, I was getting up in relatively light wind. I think my seventh session was uh, like a 12, 13 knot day and I was getting up on foil no problem. On my seventh session, I also started trying to jibe. Uh, typically before that, you're just kind of going one direction, falling flat, getting back up, facing the other direction, and then uh, continuing on. So jibing is when you can, in one continuous motion, uh, go from going one direction to facing the other way and flying in that direction. And on my seventh session, I was definitely having some success. I wasn't perfectly executing them. One thing I really found challenging was maintaining power in my wing uh, during that full process. A part of that could be the bigger setup that I'm riding makes it a little more challenging, but it was just a, it's just a weird feeling to kind of get the hold of, to get go from one position, maintaining power, and switching your feet to go the other way in one fluid motion. Through my whole learning progression, there is one tip that I would say is the most important thing to think about or know or have when you're learning to wing foil, and that is the size of your board. I'm 5'8", about 173 pounds, uh, and I was riding a 125 liter board, which was actually perfect for me, but it was lucky because I was definitely tossing up between how big a board I should get. I went bigger and I was very glad I did. Same goes with your foil. The bigger your foil, the easier it is to be is gonna be to actually get up and get riding. So depending on your weight and depending on your wind conditions, you want a big board and a big foil and that's gonna make your learning curve go way quicker. A lot of people say, I'm gonna go smaller, it's just gonna take me longer to learn and I just see them struggling on the water. They literally can't even get up off their knees because it's a very challenging sport to learn. So if there's one thing you take away from this video, get a big setup, It's going to, you're gonna thank yourself um, beyond what I can ever tell you um, because it's gonna make your learning curve go a lot faster than if you had a smaller board. I was at my, my 10th session, I connected with a local board builder, Roberts Composites, who makes the best boards on the planet. I'm gonna to link to them in the video description below and I upgraded to a smaller board. Now, their boards are custom made, so although they're a smaller board, which gives you better maneuverability, they're also a bit chunkier, so you still get those that flotation and it's easy if you're learning or starting out or just getting started on the foil uh, to get balance. So Roberts Composites, amazing boards. I highly recommend them. Again, they're linked below uh, and uh, I can't wait to ride mine more and uh, just keep going and keep flying on my foil.
That's it for this video, guys. I hope you found this helpful, my progression from uh, my first session to my seventh session. Uh, if you have any questions about your learning journey, please shoot them in the comment section below. If you didn't start behind a boat, I'm also would love to hear how many sessions it takes you guys to get up and get flying on your foil when you're wing foiling. I know it was a huge uh, learning curve assist for me to get behind a boat before I actually wing foiled, um, but for those of you who didn't get that, uh, I'd be curious to see how long it takes you guys to get up and get flying. As always, if you like this video, guys, please smash that like button. Consider subscribing to my channel. I have plenty more wing foil tutorials coming and check out my other videos because I know a lot of them have helped other people uh, get up and get riding a lot quicker and increase that learning curve uh, to get up and get flying and have that stoke. Thanks again for tuning into my channel and uh, stay tuned for the next one. Peace.